You're watching TV show review with Pip Squeak. Okay, guys, it's Pip Squeak. And I did it! I did it! I did it all right! I watched Beastars. I went in knowing nothing, and now I know everything. The only thing I'd heard about this show before I watched it was the typical blah 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 furries, blah 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 Zootopia, blah blah blah. Lego, she can get it. And let me tell you, it's so much more than that. This show is too much. This show is the definition of excess. This show is like if an edgy anime teen wrote a story but actually knew what a plot was. Like, I'm not convinced this show wasn't removed directly from my 15 year old psyche, specifically 15 years old. 14 was a little too innocent and 16 started to pull in the reins of the bullshittery. And what is the bullshittery I'm talking about? Well, the excess amount of themes present in this show at any given time. Like, what even is this show about? Well, friends, let me give you a little recap. It's about a socially anxious 17-year-old gray wolf named Legoshi. Legoshi suffers from the plight many other 17-year-olds suffer from, known as the insatiable desire to eat literally everything. But unlike most 17-year-olds, this desire crosses into predatory bloodless territory. And not predatory like he's stalking people, predatory as in he's literally a large predatory animal who wants to eat some goddamn meat. That being said, Legoshi also absolutely refuses to give in to these temptations and they start moving from just bloodlust to lustlust, you know what I mean? Why? Because this show is just so horny. It does not fall into that ridiculous anime trope where teenagers about to graduate from high school don't know what S-E-X is. It falls into that real life trope of teenagers being horny as f- and going at it like rabbits. Note to editor, censor that. The gist is it follows the high school shenanigans of a wolf who lives in a society where everyone is living on a razor's edge because all of the carnivores are literally living amongst the herbivores while secretly wanting to eat them. And the herbivores are all conscious that their lives could literally be taken at any moment, but everyone has come to the notion that the best course of action is to ignore it. Just like I try to ignore the fact that Horny Bunny Haru is voiced by Lammy from Doc McStuffins, Widget from Wow Wow Wubsy, and Juniper Lee from The Life and Times of Juniper does that make me feel weird? Absolutely. Do I have a follow-up to make it better? Nope. Okay, that's it. I have seriously had it. And come on, if I mention her, I gotta mention that they also got my boy Ben Disk in the voice Jack. You know, Caspar from Fire Emblem Three Houses. I know it's not a cartoon, but bite me. He's number one and number two from Codename Kids Next Door. And Joseph Joestar from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. My man's here is a powerhouse. He's been in so many English dubs, it's crazy. And then that leaves me with Jonas Scott, AKA Lego She. I'm not fucking Lego She, all right? Jonas Scott! It's wild because even though he's the main character, he hasn't actually voiced many characters. So way to go, Jonah. Here's to you becoming a big name in the voice acting community. Clink. Okay, okay, I went off on my little voice actor's tangent. Now let's get back to existing in a society where half of the inhabitants want to literally devour the other half of society. This dynamic leads to a lot of tensions and weird laws and gang violence? I don't know. Can't tell you too much or that would be spoilers and I don't deal in spoilers here, baby. I deal in recaps and reviews. If you're looking for spoilers, you've done gone to the wrong place, son. And with that, Let's review this, Sitch. I will be reviewing this show on a number of criteria. This is all based on the story, how well the story was able to retain my attention, characters, the opening theme, the theme sequence, art direction, dialogue, and anything else I think fits for this show. I don't always judge shows on the exact same way because each show is unique. You can't judge little Einsteins the same way you would judge Star Wars The Clone Wars, you know? Why do you even ask for my opinion? You never do things my way. We crashed the ship your way. First things first, that intro. Guys, guys, it slaps. It starts with those horns, and then the drums come in like da na 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 and then the piano comes in, and we're introduced to like a felt claymation Lego sheet in front of a moon. It's art. They went all out. I don't even want to comment on the rest of the intro because I just want people to go watch it. Trust, it's good. And it relates to the story so much. God, good intro. Pipsqueak seal of approval. Now, speaking of claymation intros, the art in this show was pretty cool. A lot of anime in recent times are experimenting with adding a lot more CGI. I get it, but my gut is predisposed to saying, "Ew, 
was CGI. <laughs> but then you could. Reminds me a lot of that video game, Catherine. Y'all remember Catherine? I remember Catherine. Now, plot. I thought it was a lot bad. No, a lot. Yes, too much. Possibly. Everything in this show was kind of a hot mess, but like on purpose. I felt like I never had a break. There was always something new, but I think honestly that was just mirroring my feelings about 2020 thus far. My inner child is just craving some structure and a sense of safety. This show was not that, and that's fair. Moral of the story, pacing was a bit on the speedy side. Plot sometimes just threw things out of left field sometimes, but it's a show about animal people not trying to rip each other's shreds constantly. I'm being a baby here. Plot was good. If I wasn't, I wouldn't have binged it in one one sitting, which I did. Characters. I'm gonna say it. I didn't like Louie Louis Rui. Hot Deer didn't do it for me. He got on my nerves a bit, but that's not saying I don't want him in this show. No. I think his character was super interesting, just insufferable. And I think it's super impressive when characters can be created that you don't like but still add to the story. I think it would have been lacking if he wasn't in it. Most of the other characters I thought were precious. Jack Legoshi's friend is a literal angel dog and deserves the world. Oh my tail swinging, maybe I'm in love. Le, 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 le. But Lastly, I personally think Juno is the weakest character. She's kind of getting the Sakura treatment where she could be cool, but her entire character revolves around her worth to a man. Juno, do better. Dialogue was good, voice acting was great, and this is from a dub purist. I always watch my anime in Japanese, but this was really well done in English. I did listen to a little bit of the Japanese dub, and Legoshi sounded like a 40-year-old man. <laughs> That brings us to the final review of Beastars. Drum roll, please. 8.5 out of 10. I'm genuinely excited to see what else this show's gonna throw at me. I'm ready for the roller coaster. And with that, I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Okay, okay, I went off on my little voice actor's tangent. Now let's get back to an existing sus- Oh, God. Ugh. Words, am I right?